Welcome to Under the Onion Skin, the podcast to get closer to independent animation directors and get to know some behind the scenes of their short films. My name is Giulia and each time I talk to a different director about a short film they made. With this podcast I hope to be able to capture a glimpse of what I love mostly about festivals, to have something to listen to when we're back to our regular lives, but above all to celebrate beautiful films, talented artists and storytellers. Welcome to Under the Onion Skin. I first discovered Kaho Yoshida's work through Skillshare because she's also teaching on the platform and because I loved her class about mixed media animation. When I saw that she was attending ANSI Festival in 2023 with her short film Tongue, I thought it would have been a lovely opportunity to meet her and have a chat by the lake. Kaho Yoshidas is a Japanese-Canadian director and she talked to me about her independent short film Tongue. In this episode, among other things, we talk about being an expat, languages and harassment. What do you think? Uh, like, uh, how was uh, the Q&A or like how yeah, was the, was the feedback? Good. good, I think because my film, I'm realizing like, you know, watching all the shorts and like watching all the films and like, watching the screenings yesterday my film might be like the most DIY projects okay. because my film has three names in the credit it's me it's my sound designer and the guy who did the voice so it's just, just like three people that worked on it I had zero financial help zero producer zero distributor like nothing and all the other films have like me or like you know there was someone who was talking about like 100 people worked on the film and I'm just like wow like why am I here kind of? No but this makes you feel like good (laughs) I think. Yeah it was very so like when I was doing the q and I was like yeah I'm the only person who worked on the animation you know I like paid for it myself you know I didn't know what I was doing so a lot of students and people who are starting out really connected because I think it's really overwhelming watching all the films with like you know, production company or like distribution. And I I think when you're starting out, you you feel like, oh, you will not get there because you don't have the connections. You don't know the people, like you don't have all these things. Yeah. But I think to see that someone can like make a film in their bedroom by themselves, I think a lot of students are like, okay, that's really great. I Maybe I can do that too. So I had a lot of students come up to me and talk to me. That's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good to uh, to see that there are different mm-hmm. possibilities yes. and different ways to make yeah, films. Yeah, And I feel like festivals, they try in their selection to mm-hmm. put different types, yeah. you know, so techniques or yes. lengths. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's really nice. I think my film was also one of the shortest films. It's only two minutes long yeah. and, you know, a lot of the films were like five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, so... Yeah. yeah. And, it did make me want to make longer films, though. Sure, but I mean, yeah. there's nothing wrong with short films. No, and, no. Uh, it yeah. it allowed you to come to and see, which exactly. is great. Exactly. Yeah. Where did you have the premiere? Uh, my premiere was at Pictoplasma oh, yeah. in Berlin. Yeah. Oh, and did you go? I the... did. I did. Oh, it was nice. wonderful. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. And then I went to Ottawa for the Ottawa Film Festival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lonely. That's yeah. congratulations. Okay. Yeah, that's like the tail end of the festival run, I think. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it's been really nice. I, I, I mean, like being at NSC is like a dream. Mm. And I met so many people. I reconnected with so many friends. I met so many people that I've known online in yeah. real life. Yeah, so it's been really nice and it's so beautiful here. I want to stay here forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you said that it reminded you of some Miyazaki film. Oh yeah, I was like, um, can I start talking to animals? Like, are they going to respond to me? I think they will. (laughs) But I wanted to ask you about your process, because you mentioned it was like a DIY project, or it was like a one-man band project. Mm -hmm. So did you do it in your free time? How did you manage to find... uh... Um, So I've been working on the concept for like a long time, maybe like five years. I've had this idea for a very long time and I would like start working on it, you know, make concepts and like storyboarding, 
stop for six months and then I'll start again and stop and so it was a lot of like starting and stopping and then during the pandemic lockdown time I had nothing better to do so I was like okay this is the time I actually have to sit down and work on it so I did all the pre-production and then after I think pre-production I did while working on commercial projects and then once that was done, I decided to take like two months of the summer to not take on any commercial projects and like focus on working on this film. So I had to like turn down the commercial projects to work on this film for two months, like full time. And then I got really nervous about not making money. So I decided to take on commercial projects for a little bit longer. And then I went back working on it again in the winter. So it was like working on and off and I worked on it full time for like maybe three months. Yeah. I mean, I, I know it's a big struggle when you have such a personal project and mm -hmm. as you said, you have to work on it on and off. Do yeah. you also feel like when you had a pause or like it, that it's hard to go back to it, like reopen yeah. the process and say, ah, okay, where, where were we? Yeah, exactly. So the, it, my production went through different kinds of phase. Like originally I wanted to make a soft core, soft core stop motion porn. Like that was my original idea. And then I was like, okay, but I want to make it more personal. Not that porn cannot be personal, but uh, I wanted to like have like a little bit more like political undertone. And so, but then at one point I wanted it to be like a true crime mystery. So it went through like different kind of phase mm -hmm. and I was just talking to like someone about this and like I've had this idea for like five years or maybe longer and I'm really glad that I didn't make the film when I first had the idea because if I had made it before I wasn't that good at animating I mean I'm not amazing now but I'm so much better than I used to be and I don't think I could have done the story justice with the skill set that I had back then so like when I was working on it on and off I felt really bad for like stopping for so long but at the end of the day I think it was good that it took this long because yeah I'm a lot better at storytelling now and I have the ability to do things that I actually wanted to do yeah that's good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you animate it? So it's 2D, but... Yeah, yeah so all the tongues, most of the tongues are stop motion. Yeah. It's clay, and then the character animation and the backgrounds are in 2D. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, so how, yeah, but what's the pro process first? You start with the 2D, or mm. and then you make the stop motion for it? It, it was a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so I did the animatic, mm -hmm. because... It was like, I don't know, like 60 to 80 percent 2D. So I made the animatic and I did the rough animation with like all the in-betweens and things. And then I shot stop motion that matched the animation, the 2D animation. But some scenes I animated stop motion first and matched the uh, 2D animation later okay. because 2D animation, you have more control. Stop motion, sometimes you don't have a lot of control. Exactly, yeah. Because gravity is mm -hmm. hard. Um, so it was some some parts I animated the stop motion first and some parts 2D first. Yeah. yeah. This is a very, very particular technique. And mm -hmm. now, actually, now that I think about it, I think the very first time I found you, mm -hmm. it was because of Skillshare. Yes. And because you have this uh, class that combines yeah, yeah, yeah. stop motion and uh, 2D, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it, this is very interesting to understand what's the process because mm -hmm. as you said it's much easier to adapt the 2D to yes. the shot yeah. rather yeah, yeah. than make the shot match. Yeah, yeah. It must be tricky. Yeah. Of course, was it like green screen? Yeah, I did green screen and I did a lot of rotoscope, like, yeah. not rotoscoping but like roto masking and greening. Yeah. Yeah, it was very tedious. <laughs> Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah just and like, then also co like color correction after mm -hmm. to make it um, yeah. match with the uh, 2D. Yeah, actually I didn't have to do a lot of color correction because mm -hmm. the tongues were just like really pink. Yeah. Yeah, so that wasn't an issue, but yeah, like 
animating 2D first and then animating stop motion and fixing the 2D animation to match the stop motion, rotoscoping the stop motion to like comp mm. and then <laughs> adding 2D animation on top of it. Yeah. It's just a whole lot of process. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. And at that point, you ask yourself, why am I doing yeah, this? Yeah, I feel like all animators are masochists, though. We love the pain. Yeah. I often think so, too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. But do you manage to use this uh, same technique also with commissions and clients? Yeah, I mean, stop motion is my true love. I want to work, like, I want to do stop motion as much as possible. But with client projects, you know, yeah. it's a little bit harder because you can't do as much revisions and things like that. Um, so, like having 2D elements makes clients feel better. Yeah, that's, uh, it's also probably faster and Yes, yes, and... yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I think mixed media is where I feel most comfortable and most excited because I love 2D, but I also love stop motion. So mm -hmm. being able to do both is good for me. Yeah, that's very really nice. What about the tongue? Like, <laughs> was it since the beginning like mm -hmm. the the biggest protagonist? To yeah, it? for yeah. sure. I'm obsessed with tongues. I mean, I love body parts, but especially tongue because I moved to Canada by myself when I was 15. I didn't speak English at all, and so I'm an immigrant who speaks with an accent. So you know, like every time I open my mouth, I reveal my otherness because I have an accent. I definitely don't belong in Canada. Like people know that I'm not from there because of my accent. And I feel like my tongue betrays me every time I open my mouth and oh. you know, keeps me from accessing certain privilege or possibilities that people without an accent can access to. But at the same time, it allows me to taste delicious food, talk to my friends and like give and receive pressure. So I have a very complicated relationship with my own tongue and so i think about tongues a lot and you know being in canada and being an immigrant woman and like being an asian woman a lot of men come up to me and like say things that is not okay and but you know these men they don't have an accent and i'm just like jealous that they get to speak without an accent but they're choosing to say these shitty things to me so i just like stare at them and think oh, i wish i could just pull their tongues away yeah and that was how i came up with this story i understand and honestly i really i really can relate mm -hmm. um i'm i also moved to a new another country and even yeah. if i try my best to speak yeah. the language you're always gonna be yeah. not 100 percent yeah. from there even mm -hmm. like 20 years ago yeah do you feel like your audience gets this do you feel like yeah. they or each person maybe gets different parts and that's I think also okay. so I think so I think a lot of women get it a lot of you know queer people get it a lot of Asian people understand I don't know if, if everybody gets it um, what do you mean that's okay yeah it's, just, it's okay and I I was really afraid of like releasing the film online because I thought I would get a lot of hate Hmm. But I haven't. Okay. I had. I thought I would get a lot of like creepy comments. I haven't. That's so good. that's that's been really nice. Yes. Yeah. And also, I mean, at least here in a festival crowd, I feel mm -hmm. like animators or artists in general are very yeah. very open. Yes. And it's always nice, I think, mm -hmm. to see someone else yeah. work and thoughts, mm -hmm. and, you know, backgrounds. Yeah. And, yeah, and it was really good to see the Competition 5. I don't know if you saw Competition 5. It, no. But it was definitely the spiciest mm. uh, collection of films. A lot of nudity, a lot of sex, a lot of genitals, <laughs> a lot of body parts. And I thought my film was like quite out there, but oh man, yeah. I could have pushed it even further and oh, yeah. had me accept it. So. That was, that was nice to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In other festivals, you didn't notice uh, sometimes like this kind of mm, selections? Not as much. Mm. And I think other festivals, they had like the midnight screenings right. or like the adults only screenings. And but Competition 5, it was the Regular, official competition, yeah. but very spicy. Mm. 
Oh, I missed that. Yeah, some of some of the films were like, dang, that's okay. You mm. can do this. All right. And the what the fuck screenings were really good. Did you yeah. see? Yeah, I yeah. did. And some of them I already knew, but yeah. uh, it's always good to yeah. to rewatch them. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to see how how much people are pushing the animation. Yeah. You know? It it made me feel like I can try more things. Exactly. I think this is very nice in festivals that you see everything mm -hmm. in terms really of, you know, style and topic yeah. and the length and and it's inspiring because yeah. it makes you think there are infinite possibilities. Yes. And also that festivals appreciate mm -hmm. all yeah. of them. Yeah. Mm. It's really cool. And it's so nice to see so many like queer filmmakers at this festival. Yeah. Because you don't see that in every festival. Yeah, I'm glad to see that conversation like this is happening more at festivals. Yeah. Yeah, because some festivals, I've been there because my films were selected, but I felt like a complete outsider and I didn't belong there. Mm. Yeah. Where in Canada exactly are you from? Thanks, Cuba. Okay. So yeah. 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 I've never been. I would it's, love to. It's a beautiful city in the summer. Yeah. But it rains for like 10 months of the year, so... Yeah, no. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not great in the winter. Unless you like to ski or something. Mm. I've been freelancing for like eight years now. And I'm represented as a commercial director by Jelly London now. And so most of my clients are not in Canada. Yeah. Uh, usually states or Europe and it's nice because Canadian dollars cheaper than like states or euro so mm. that really helps um, but it's so expensive in Vancouver to live so it's hard to take time off and work on personal projects but I try to as much as possible mm -hmm. yeah I know the struggle yeah yeah it's 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 so expensive to live anywhere and stuff Mm, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be a big picnic, I guess. Yes, I heard about this. Like, um, they're gonna have boat race. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I ask you the last question, yes. which is, uh, if you like onions, I do love onions. And how do you like onions? How do I like onions? Huh? Caramelized. Probably is yeah. the kind of spray. Yes. That's good. Good yeah. answer. Yeah. Bread, caramelized onion, and egg. Mm. Balsamic, salt, pepper. Sounds very nice. Good. 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 Like crepes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you liked this episode and the chat I had with Kaho. You can find her online at kahoyoshida.com. As usual, all the info and links are in the show notes. That's a wrap and thanks for tuning in. Until next time with another director and a short animated film. Ciao.